In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a big look at the tropics where we still have major Hurricane Gabrielle out there. We also have two areas of relatively high chance of development, one of which is really threatening the East Coast, so we're going to be watching that one closely, and we're even going to be diving into brand new spaghetti model guidance for these to systems as well as intensity guidance from the models so we have a little bit more data to go over we're also going to be talking about the overall precipitation in the united states where again things are looking improved in the east unfortunately we have taken a little bit of a step back from yesterday but the good news is that that is happening because rain is currently falling in the mid-atlantic and northeast so a lot of that is fallen as of the model run and uh, so you're kind of subtracting what's happened today out of it. So it isn't as bad as it seems on the model guidance. And then also taking a look at some chance for cooler temperatures in the longer range for early on in October. So let's go ahead and dive into this uh, current situation in the Atlantic. And again, we have major hurricane Gabrielle right there. Um, we also have our two areas of disturbance. And this one here has a 90% chance of development. And it also does appear... Like this one is going to eventually curve out to sea as of now. That is the current consensus for most of what I'm seeing from the models. But it's important to note that this can change. So we're watching this one still, but it does look good so far for uh, more of an out to sea track. And as we take a look at this one, uh, and by the way, this is actually that disturbance, which is probably going to develop sooner than later. Uh, and for this orange area here, Actually, this cluster over the Eastern Caribbean is eventually what is expected to move into this area. Uh, now, things are getting interesting because this area here is sliding to the south. And it really is uh, much further south and east than we originally anticipated. So this one could very well impact areas like Dominican Republic, Haiti now. Can't even rule out Cuba at this point uh, for a potential impact. So we really don't know... Uh, even where this one's going to head in the near term as far as those little micro differences is what I would call them. Uh, but we do suspect that it is going to end up over this area. And most guidance that I've seen does take this one almost straight through the Bahamas. And that's pretty much where the guidance ends. Yesterday we saw long range model runs showing this striking near North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia area. Of course, there still is the chance that this one uh, narrowly misses the East Coast as well or comes on shore more into uh, more dangerous areas. And really, you can't even rule out Florida or other areas in the Gulf. So there is a lot of time to go and a lot of possibilities. But uh, again, the most likely outcome is that it does end up in this area and is threatening the East Coast, at least uh, currently. Now, let's take a little look at Gabrielle. That is still a Category 4 monster hurricane out here. I mean, this thing is just a tremendously intense hurricane. You can see a really well-defined eye there. This one is expected to uh, really start to lose some intensity as it moves eastward. And eventually going to be impacting uh, some of these islands up here. Uh, which I always struggle with the name, Azores, Azores, uh, Azor. I don't really know how you pronounce it, but those islands there uh, are maybe going to be impacted pretty directly by this thing. And it might even still be a Category 1 hurricane by the time it's doing that. So we really have been talking about this one as if it's an innocent storm, but it may uh, bring some impacts. Thankfully, not as a Category 4 monster hurricane like it is now, but it might still bring some pretty major impacts to some of those islands. And eventually, look at this, tropical storm status as it's approaching Portugal here, potentially well down the road. So really interesting stuff there. Let's go ahead and move into some of that model guidance as far as spaghetti model guidance and intensity guidance. And then again, we're going to get into the lower 48 weather as a whole. Here is your spaghetti model guidance for what is now being called 94L, Invest 94L. This is that one that threatens the East Coast more. And again, it looks to just kind of stall out. It's hardly moving right now. Uh, and then eventually move very close to Puerto Rico over Dominican Republic. And then the mean average of this would be like straight through the Bahamas here. Something like that. But we do get these little models that want to just curve it out at a certain point, some earlier than others. And we do have this uh, Yukmet model 
It's a little bit further to the west, which would maybe put Florida in danger. So again, there is a wide variety of possibilities here. The reason for that is because this storm is not developed yet and we're, you know, working with limited data. But once this storm is more developed, uh, and believe it or not, the sooner that happens, actually, the better because we're going to get better data uh, for it. So once that happens, they're going to be able to send some planes in there, get better data to input into these models. And then we're going to get a lot more of a clearer view as far as the track and intensity of this one. But as of now, you can see there is a huge variety of possibilities from the models. Looking at the intensity guidance for this one. Here's the good news. I mean, this one really looks to, um, well, this is the wrong one, actually. Let me go ahead and switch this over to this. This is the correct one. So we look to hover around tropical storm status for a while, uh, at least through the 27th here, uh, and mostly below that. But there's a possibility we get a tropical storm out of this one by tomorrow or, tomorrow or the next day here, 24th, 25th time frame. Um, a lot of these models that do bring it up to higher status do come back down before going back up again around the 27th. Uh, and then you can see the trend is up towards a stronger tropical storm, maybe even approaching category one hurricane status here. We have one going over that line, uh, but this isn't the craziest outlook as far as intensity in the world, obviously. So maybe looking at a weaker tropical system. And I say maybe because again, there's still a lot of data that needs to be inputted for us to know a lot more, but uh, this is good news so far as far as intensity. Let's kind of just dive into the next system, which is that Invest 93L, which currently sits at a 90% chance of development over the next seven days. By the way, I forgot to mention, but 94L, the one threatening the East Coast, has upgraded from a 50% chance to a 60% chance since yesterday. So we have seen that one climb a little bit, but this one is 90% chance of development and if we were to kind of just outline all the potential tracks, we can see it is pretty wide, but thankfully, because the mean average of this is so far offshore, this does look to be a fish storm overall. And what I mean is out to sea, most, most certainly. Um, we do see some of this model guidance getting closer, but closer is still hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles offshore. So really good news here coming in from this spaghetti model guidance on this one. And looking at the intensity guidance for it, which I do have to switch because I had them the wrong way around. This one is expected to uh, by tomorrow, the 24th, or the next day on the 25th, probably by that point, cross over into tropical storm status. If not, the rest of the models have it happening by the 26th or 27th here. So within the next few days, I would say we probably have a tropical storm out of this one. And if we take the mean average of this, uh, we do see this one climbing uh, likely towards that category one hurricane status, at least a few of these have this thing rapidly climbing towards category two, three, or four status here over the coming days. But again, the current track tells us that this might be more of a Gabrielle type outcome where, uh, mostly this is going to be a non-event for most land masses. Bermuda is in the crosshair. So we're going to be watching for that closely, but even that could trend away. So we'll continue to keep you guys updated on all of these things. Let's take a look at the six to 10 day temperature outlook. Still just warmth coast to coast here on the six to 10 day outlook, which is for September 29th through October 3rd. And still on this eight to 14 day outlook, the first through the 7th of October, we have coast to coast warmth as well. Again, I still think there's some potential for this to change for that early October timeframe. The models have kind of backed off of the cooler air a little bit as of today, unfortunately, for those of us hoping for more fall-like weather. Uh, obviously, our averages are dropping, so slightly above average temperatures in early October is much different than early September. Uh, of course, as our averages are continuously dropping every single day at this point, but uh, this would be less cool than what we're typically used to. Looking at the past 30 days, because I really want to watch this kind of play out over the coming days. So we're just going to watch the 30 day temperature anomaly up until we get to the final day of September when we'll have a clearer view, but this is including all of that late August stuff into early September. And we dealt with so much cooler temperatures here over a lot of the central and Eastern states that we are still even including the last week or two of warmth that we've had still, this is below normal temperatures uh, and largely below average temperatures for areas in the plains, Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, mid Northeast, Southeast here. 
And it's going to take a lot over the next seven days to change this. So we're going to see, it's kind of a race against time. We're going to see if we end up with a below average month in the east or above. Uh, but we're going to finish out on a warmer note. So it just depends how warm it really is day after day. We'll see what happens though. Looking at the overall storminess, again, some rainfall showers around for parts of the mid-Atlantic and northeast today. The plains and Rockies as well. Uh, looking towards tomorrow on Wednesday, we do see a lot of thunderstorm and showery activity around here for the deeper south. Parts of like the lower Midwest, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, um, and even some of like your deep south, northern Alabama and Mississippi areas. We also see the mid-Atlantic and northeast still seeing some showers around for tomorrow on Wednesday. By Thursday the 25th, we can see up and down this eastern corridor, we have precipitation around. Really good news, and almost everywhere in here really, really needs it. So to, uh, this is for Thursday the 25th. Very, very good day as far as precipitation. Moving towards Friday on the 26th, our tropical cyclone is now visible nearby that very eastern area of Cuba. So we'll be watching this closely. The southeast and even into the mid-Atlantic and northeast is seeing some chances of showers for Friday as well. Here's by Saturday on the 27th, where we see a lot of the southeast primarily seeing precipitation. Our tropical cyclone is intensifying over the Bahamas, but it doesn't look to be coming close to the eastern states by any means. Sunday the 28th is still just hanging out out there as a 998. Monday on the 29th, it starts to climb northward again, so we're going to have to see down to a 992. It gets down to a 985 here early on Tuesday morning. This is 2 a.m., but then it gets rejected out to sea uh, without really impacting anywhere in the east. It does try to make a comeback towards uh, the northeast in some areas on this model run, like Rhode Island, Massachusetts, coastal New Hampshire, coastal Maine. Here, do see some outer bands from this one. It's down to a 978 by this point. So this would be a very intense storm system offshore of them. Uh, but a close call. This is all the way by October 5th here. Uh, but it does end up really not striking directly. And then we actually end up on the model run here for late October looking quite dry. I will note here that we do end up still in a ridge in the west, trough in the east pattern. It's just not a really intense one at all. It's near normal to below normal temperatures for some areas in here. It's not a widespread major cool air event. Uh, now the GFS model, I want to just see our tropical system here. Uh, and that one is way, way, way far out to sea. I think what happens is actually the 93L system absorbs the one that's underneath. So that ends up just transferring its energy into the larger system that we do expect to be out to sea. So that is another way that we could avoid this system altogether that is closer uh, to the east. We'll see what happens though. Looking at the total precipitation, again, it's a little bit of a downgrade, especially in these areas because... We've seen some precipitation around throughout the day today, so you have to subtract that uh, out of it is what we're basically seeing here versus yesterday's model runs. But this is not a bad idea and not a really bad outlook for the plains eastward for the areas that need it. I mean, we do see some very slightly below normal precipitation for the mid-Atlantic and northeast, but most of this is within an inch of normal, so not a huge, huge, huge difference. We do see a drier upper Midwest and Great Lakes, and we also see a drier deep south central states like Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas, another area that really needs it. Some above average numbers are coming in for parts of the Midwest, parts of the Ohio Valley, and then parts of the Southeast, which is promising and definitely good news. For the temperatures, we're actually gonna go into the European AI model that's recently seen a pretty big update. We've kind of played around with this model over the past year or so. Kind of just checking it out every once in a while and the reason i wanted to show it is because it has a very interesting solution today uh, we will show you the normal gfs model in a minute which is going to be a lot more uh, mild and warm so definitely going to be comparing the two definitely take this with a grain of salt as it is still considered to be an experimental uh, model but we deal with mostly warmth until about the third here, where we do get a backdoor cold front for the East Coast, we start to deal with cooler temperatures along the eastern seaboard again for the very beginning of October. And then we get a full-blown uh, kind of cooler pattern set up because of this warmth in the West that this model shows around uh, October 8th here. 
We start to get cooler air diving in through the central and eastern states, but there is a lot of pushback from this warmth. So this model shows a battle between these two air masses happening over the central and eastern states. Whereas the GFS model here, I'm just going to play it out because we really don't end up with much in the way of cooler air. Uh, overall, we actually end up with maybe that backdoor cold front a little bit. It's a little bit more exclusive for the coastal locations there. Again, first few days of October. After that, uh, we just continue to see the warmth. Uh, most of the cooler air is pouring down the western states, so we call this a negative PNA, and this encourages warmth into the central and eastern states, which we continue to see on this model straight through the end of it, October 9th. Hopefully this doesn't play out. This is very boring, leads to less precipitation, which is really, really bad, and most everybody wants it to feel like they'll at least fall uh, for this time of year. So we're going to be watching it closely. This has been back and forth a little bit, so don't be surprised if tomorrow or the next day we see major cool air again on these two major models. Time will tell, of course, but we'll keep you guys up to date. So be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.